Hello everybody, my name is Anton, welcome back to Let's Play Caesarian. So last time, uh, they rejected my uh, policy proposal. And we have five economy points, we're doing it. Okay, so the economy's better than it used to be. We did fail the meeting. Uh, which... Ugh, not great. Losing stood upright, holding a large folder of files under his arm. He bowed in acknowledgement. He looked exhausted. The cabinet is getting gathered in the white room, sir. The vice president will be opening the session soon. We can go in whenever you're ready. Anything you want to say before we go in? No, sir. Just kept uh, keep your cool about with the cabinet. I believe concerns we raised in the meeting. Okay, let's go in and hear them out. Of course, sir. Lucian held the door for me, and we both left the office for the white room. We entered the room. Peter was speaking to the cabinet members who were already seated around the table. As soon as they noticed me, they all stood up. Good evening, everybody. Please take a seat. Peter turned towards me. Everybody except him took their seats. He stood right next to my chair in the middle. And here's our president. He held out my chair for me to sit down and smiled. Please. I sat down. Peter walked to his seat and spoke, still standing. Ladies and gentlemen, we're here to discuss our current status and the plan for the remainder of our term. I know that some of you had have had your voice uh, concerned about our style of government so far. Uh, there will be time to speak about these in the meeting today. But let's also thank you for your hard work so far. You're very lucky to have a team like this. All of you have been invaluable to this administration. Lilith grimaces at the remarks. Having said that, now we've reached a critical uh, point of our term. We are nearing the end. We have uh, worked long and hard, but we cannot reform the Sorta's constitution. The Supreme Court blocked us once again. Another stain on our democracy. Me and Lucy and know the culprits. Heron and the other centrists uh, voted against us. He paused and looked around the room. But the past is past, we must look towards our future. We are investigating and analyzing our faults, we will be taking measures accordingly. He glanced at both Lucian and me. Our party still remains divided. In order to look towards the future, we may need to make some changes. On the other hand, the opposition is exploiting our failure uh, to reform. The latest poll shows a steep increase of opposition support. So let's start the meeting with a brief look at some reports. He followed with a stack of papers in front of him. Despite the recent troubles, people seem to be content with our administration, and public opinion hasn't changed much. He took a piece of paper with a stack and expected it. The biggest concern of the people is the state of the economy. We are still plagued by recession. It's only a matter of time until the people will be hit further. This will have dire consequences for administration. This is the time to give the best we can for this administration and for Sorland. And I'll give the word to the president now. He sat down. Mr. Price President, thank you for the opening. Everyone's eyes are focused on me. Do we just make, do we just straight up go for the alliance? Do we make the oh it's it's risky it's so risky. I'm gonna do it. We're gonna make an alliance. First off, I make make more attachment. I decided to form an alliance with the PFJP. Some people looked at me que questioningly. Does anybody have any concerns about this decision? Lilith stood up. I'm sure everybody does, Mr. President. I was against the idea of cooperating with Mr. Victor from the beginning. I think you're pushing our party too far. Joseph not in agreement. I disagree. We have, we have much in common with Mr. Richter. An alliance with them is beneficial for our party. Do we really? I think it's more of a political maneuver, Mr. President. We have nothing in common with anti soulless liberals. You can try, uh, but you can't force us to change our values. I have valid concerns, Mrs. Graff. I'm open to reconsideration. He was taken aback. She sat down and her eyes locked on me. Let's vote on it. We're going to let democracy. Peter leaned back in his chair and nodded. Good idea. Let's hear all the ice for the alliance. Sierra, David, Pascal, Pietro, and Nia raised their hands. Fire for the alliance and uh, nays. Lilith, Yosef, and Gus raised their hand. Lilith looks in disbelief. Five to three. I think it's settled. Oh, good. We're proceeding with the alliance. I tapped twice on the table. Tap, tap. Next, I want to hear a brief report from each ministry. Peter gestured Simon and he immediately stood up. Mr. President, dear colleagues, Mr. Vice President was pretty on point with a summary of the current economic situation. Recession has, is still our one concern. This year has seen a 1.0% decrease in our GDP. On the other hand, unemployment has greatly decreased. We have managed to cut from 16% to 12%, and we are estimating a further decrease in the near future. He paused for a moment. 
Well, I don't want to get too much into the detail right now, but I have to say that the failure to open our first infrastructure project was costly. Fortunately, we expect to see it finished by the next few months. But apart from that, I'll finish with an update on our latest project. The manager reported that everything is going well and very fast in the Conroy Industrial Zone. I'll keep it brief for the sake of the whole meeting and end my report on that note. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Gus stood up uh, as, Simon, as soon as Simon sat down. He asked for a private audience with the cabin respected. It was just the two of us in this room. Well, I will also give this very brief, Mr. President. The trade deal between Wheel and increased agricultural exports from the Burgia region. Our local farmers are still suffering. Our ministry did its best in giving out subsidies to local farmers, but our agricultural production remains the same. We've only recorded some development in the Agland region, but our farmers in Gessland and Burgia are still suffering. Additionally, I bring good news regarding our investment. The vineyard has begun producing some wine. I've also arranged several wine tasters uh, to sample and give ideas on how to improve qu uh, quality. In a few years, Vinland may even challenge the regional samples. It would uh, need some further attention to reach those goals, however. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Gus invited the cabinet back in and sat down. Some are obviously opposed to such behavior. Next up was Pascal. Mr. President, there are currently no major problems within the Ministry of Health. We are currently uh, investigating some reports of small polio outbreaks around the village called Hymir. I believe we can get more details in our policy meeting. Thank you very much. The Ministry of Defense is a very important report regarding our situation with Rundberg. The investigation showed that Rundberg was in fact weaponizing rebels against our state. We have learned that they have been aiding Belarus rebels in Wayland too. Our military must stand ready for any a possible attack coming from Rundberg. We have gathered intelligence regarding their military research and production. They are building a massive army. Our military approach doesn't have the budget to prepare against such a force. We, can't, we cannot let them threaten us like this. Make the necessary arrangements, Mr. Uh, Lencia. We'll have to use whatever we have to its limits. Of course, sir. David, stand up. Mr. President, Stalport has agreed to begin uh, trade negotiations. We'll be moving on that very soon. Our relationship with Agnoli has greatly improved, and our ministries have scheduled many joint projects together. Cooperation between Wayland and Sorlin has increased to a new level. However, we are seeing its negative impact with Lesbia. The region is very unstable. Uh, with the incidents of Rundberg, Valen, and Hegeland, we must be very cautious. Can we talk about more? We can talk more in our detail and foreign policy. Thank you, Mr. Whiskey. Sierra was next. Our ministry is working day and night to improve our education system and increasing its accessibility. We have since built over 100 new schools and improved accessibility. Uh, we've accomplished a lot with our new curriculum. Our reforms have, will greatly improve our output as a society. Mr. President, there's an important uh, report from intelligence officers. Uh, we have disrupted a radio signal from several Blutish Freedom Front militias, uh, militants of Burgia. We see there's some sort of preparation going on. We might need to implement some new measures soon. We will provide you more details and report later dates. One last thing. I would like to transfer the Jeremandre under the Ministry of the Interior to improve internal security efforts. I haven't heard of this before. I'm still working on a proposal and have legal backing for it. I was going to mention it later. The Ministry of Defense shouldn't be meddling in the internal uh, security affairs through the Jeremandre. I, I know they're pronouncing that name wrong, but it's fine. We have several incidents where they have been too violent too quick, uh, too violent too quickly, and it stands for military officers giving reckless orders at times. If the security situation gets more problematic, then we might then it might be necessary. It will eventually cause a problem between our forces. There are already already miscommunications going on. Will you transfer Jeremandre to the interior in the future? Yeah, sure, why not? Excellent. Licia smiled faintly. Thank you for your reports. Next, I want to go on to about their new focus and some plans moving forward. The state of our economy is very concerning. It must be our focus to achieve quick economic development. So I'm in, not in agreement. I mean, we can't get elected if we do not improve the economy. Almost everyone seems to be in agreement with me. If there are no uh, comments, let's move on with the meeting. I, I believe that's everything. Everybody packed up and left the white room. And I went back to my office. Almost two and a half years escaped us so fast. Right, we got some more news. USP announces alliance with PFJP. I mean, that seems, that seems okay. Maybe. We'll find out. Address to a national... So we gotta do like a uh, State of the Union kind of thing. How are actually things going? You're halfway done. I'm hoping like both these finish relatively soon. Fingers crossed. Lucy and I walked into my office in the Room Palace to make my address to the, nation, to the nation's speech. 
It was unusually crowded today. Cameras, lights, and microphones were set in place, and the crews were standing by ready to start filming. Are you ready, sir? Yes. Let's do this. Good. I think the crew is ready. As soon as you take your seat, we can go live. I took my seat and uh, rearranged my notes on the desk as a crew member powdered my face with a cotton puff. After everybody was ready, the director gave a sign to start filming, and I looked directly into the camera. My fellow citizens. I swore to election on the winds of change, change that was desperately sought and called for you, the people of Sorland. From the moment I was sworn in, I have done nothing but fight to achieve this change you demanded. Alas, my vision was too grand for the narrow scope of our current Supreme Court. Um, let's see. Justice could not convince Sorland. You know what? Let's let's just shit all over the Supreme Court. The justices could not conceive of a Sorland in which they weren't free to exchange in corruption and bribery, knowing nobody could remove them from office. They stubbornly clung to Sorland's past, knowing it would cost us the country's future. But I will tell you this: I am not done fighting for you. Uh, that's, um... Historians shall look upon this and as but a mi minor hurdle in Sorland's path to greatness. The future lies in our hands. And together as a country, there is no end to what we can achieve. I took a deep breath, Lucian shoot a fly away from my forehead. We will start by focusing on the economy. I would like to thank my wife and children for standing by me. Agmorga Vescor, Victor and Sista. The director gave the cut signal and the camera and stopped filming. My speech was finished. How did people feel about my speech? It didn't, it didn't even make the news. <laughs> Revelations. So we're still on chapter four. I'm assuming... There's an election every four years. So I actually don't know, like, I don't know actually how to get reelected. Because I've had at some point the game's gotta kinda end, right? Okay, so we got two things of news, both from Giopolito. Queen Beatrice demands reparations for century old alligator war crimes. So she wants war reparations from us. Hundred killed in Hegeland. City of Estord. Look, Rumberg. I'm not going to give you any reparations. Is there anything else? No, we're just basically seeing our son off. It was a cloudy, rainy day in Hoslord. Gloomy weather echoed on my own feelings. My constitutional changes had been defeated. I was back to square one. I couldn't spend a day moping, however. Frank was finally about to leave home. My son piled in the last of his bags next to the door. Sergey and the assistant driver were waiting outside next to my car. Did you pack everything? Don't forget to make, give me a call immediately after you arrive. Mom, I'm moving less than an hour away. You'll see me all the time. I know, but it won't be the same. Monica helped him pout his backpack on while Sergey started carrying the luggage to the car. I made you a sack lunch. I'll get it from the kitchen. She dashed down the hall. Frank and I turned to face each other in the doorway. So, I guess this is it. You're gonna do great. Thanks, Dad. I mean, you fucked up the entrance exam, but we'll see. Frank shifted his weight nervously. I never got what you told me about your university years. I hope Hostler State gives me a chance to prove myself the same way you did. Don't model your life on mine. You're your own man now, Frank. Frank smiled. All right, Dad. At the moment, Dina rushed to the door. Frank! Frank! I'm gonna miss you. I'll miss you, too. Don't forget, you've got to give Mom and Dad an extra hard time for both of us now. Dina nodded. Okay. Frank, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Frank picked up uh, his sister and gave her a big hug. Monica appeared in the doorway holding a paper bag. I cut the cross off your sandwiches just the way you used to like. I'm not a kid anymore, Mom. Can't the mother pretend? Oh, Frank. 
She embraced him with tears in her eyes. Frank looked that he was about to cry as well. Sergey approached. Sir, as for the schedule, Frank needs to be at Hostel State University to start his orientation in an hour. So we'll have to leave now to make it. It's time to go, Frank. Frank turned around and took one last look at me. Make me proud. Frank nodded before heading to the car. It's difficult to see them growing grow old and leave, isn't it? It's time for him to find himself in the world. He will. We all did, after all. Living away from home, making your own choices for the first time, it changes a man. I think it was a liberating experience for him. It's never easy for boys to live in the shadow of their fathers, and it must be even harder when one's father is Anton Rain. The gr a great man like you casts a very long shadow. Well said. He nodded and looked at his watch. Time to go. Frank waved his hand as he entered the car. The engine started and they were on their way. Monica stood next to me as they drove away. Her eyes were teary. There he goes. It already feels different. She put her head on my shoulders. I know. With the defeated reforms, I hope you will be all right. We watched for a few more minutes, even after the car was no longer in sight. I sighed and closed the door. We finished the railway! Let's go! The railway is done! It was finally happening! Tomorrow will be the grand opening ceremony of the L1 High Speed Rail. Though the construction delay had taken its toll on our morale, this was still a proud moment for all of us. Simon and Gus, who had heavily assisted in the project, had come to discuss the ceremony plans with Lucien and myself. Lucien stood up. First of all, they might have arrived later than we expected, but it doesn't change the fact that we are here now. This is a big success. Congratulations, everybody. To many more projects like this. Well done, everybody. We couldn't have done this without our excellent team. Indeed. Let's move on to our plans for the opening tomorrow. It's been a long time since the last successful infrastructure project. From a public relation point of view, we can certainly capitalize on the occasion. And I have a plan on how to do that. If the president accepts, driving the first high-speed train to Latvian will be great for our image nationwide. What are your thoughts? I don't support anything beyond the opening ceremony. The railway's construction speaks for itself. I see your point, but involving the president further could be beneficial to our administration. I think so too. I agree. Get me on that train. Very well. Sounds fantastic. The president arriving in Latvian and the driver's seats would make for headlines for sure. Additionally, a large crowd has been invited to ceremony and will be watching the opening speech. Nothing like a cheerful crowd. Looking forward to it. I think we all, I think all of us are. On another note, I think it goes out mentioning that this was a team effort. Beginning with the president who put his trust in me. I want to thank all those who were involved in L1. Simon, you deserve the credit. After all, it was you who came up with the project. We had our disagreements, but the most important thing is the outcome. The Swordish people have been waiting a long time for this. We will show our best face tomorrow. Meanwhile, I'll make sure that our message about improving the countryside gets across. After, uh, all right then. We have a lot of work to do. See you tomorrow morning. See you at the ceremony. We all disperse in order to prepare for the big day. The next morning, a stage has been erected inside the central station. It was a sunny day in our usual cloudy capital city. The crowd looked quite large. I spotted a few many party members. We took our place on stage. I gave the green light to Lucian, and the opening address began. Brothers and sisters of Sorland, I welcome you Hoslordians today as a proud servant of this country. Lucian's voice echoed at the central station. Thousands of Sorland and USP flags began to wave as the loud career cheers were intensified. Without further ado, I invite the president of Sorland to the stage. I walked to the podium to address the crowd. The press was uh, taking dozens of pictures. My fellow Hoslians, our Hossordians, I welcome you today to the opening ceremony of our L1 High Speed Railway. The chanting from the crowd continued. Some are yelling the motto of, Hoss of Hosslord, a high above all. Trust me, our work is far from over. This project is only beginning. Uh, we built this railway to get economic growth to, for, uh, throughout greater Hosslord and Gessland regions. And thanks to this railway, travel between Hostler and Lackfiend is now twice as fast and endlessly more comfortable. Was it Simon? Who do I who do I agree with this? Ah! Do I want to take credit? 
I don't remember who I said did it. I don't remember who... Yeah, okay, so Simon agreed to it. You know what? I want to acknowledge the brilliant mind behind this project. The esteemed Minister of Economy and Tax, Simon Hall. Please come here. Simon walked up beside me. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, let me get. Let me just double check. It was him that came up with it, right? I'm not giving credit to the wrong person. Simon, you deserve the credit after all this. You came up with the project. Okay, so he, he did do it. Or it was his idea that came up with it. Our mission project was obvious to improve the speed and efficiency of transportation. And once we cut the ribbon and the cities of Hostel get on the train, I believe you'll agree that we have succeeded. So I went on to explain how the railway is a crucial stepping stone in the way for full source of economic recovery. Lucian took Simon's place after he was done and gave a speech. Citizen Hostel, there you have it. As promised, Anton Rain, the four president Sorlin has delivered. We walked towards the line where the first electric train was waiting. The rev ribbon was hanging by the door of the train. Hi Simon handed me an oversized pair of scissors. I cut the ribbon, triggering a wave of cheers from the crowd and cameras flash. Congratulations to all, and hopefully the success will lead to many more. It was a good moment indeed. We have helped so many in the countryside. The train is prepared, sir. The journey to Latvian should take oh, about four hours. The rest of us will be on the train as well. Get in the train. I entered the cab. He took a seat with the assistant beside me. The crowd was trying to catch a glimpse of me through the window. Who do you want to travel in the cab with, Mr. President? Lucian? No. I want to have Simon in the cab. This isn't necessary, but I won't refuse. We can talk about the future economic prospects. The locomotive assistant flipped a few switches, uh, and the train began pulling out from- Why is she here? I don't know. Simon smiled awkwardly at the press photogra uh, photographers as I drove. The new train was in pristine condition. Its electric engine uh, proved the smoothest ride I've ever had. After an uneventful four hours on board, we were welcomed by a throng of citizens to Latvian station. The railway officially opened to the public uh, right after we left, and thousands began using it. It was a great victory for my administration. Fantastic. Sorry State Corporation finally finished the L1 railway, and President Rain opens the long-awaited L1 railway. Fantastic. I think I said fantastic five times there. But I think it's going to be a good time for us to end this episode, so thanks everybody for watching my say and swim. If you enjoyed, my thumbs up. Now do we close them down. You want to see more subscribe and goodbye.